from WFAA TV, Channel 8. This is Good Morning Texas. Thanks, guys. All right, well, we have recently learned that sleep apnea in adults can lead to high blood pressure or heart disease. But in children, sleep apnea causes everything from behavioral problem, problems to impaired brain development. Today, Dr. Craig Schwimmer from the Snoring Center is here to talk about some of those special concerns. Good morning to you, Craig. Good morning, Amy. This does sound serious in children, isn't it? Absolutely, it really is. And, and as you said, we've talked about how important and what a big issue sleep apnea is for adults. One of the main reasons being that there's decreased oxygen delivery to the brain during those stop breathing spells. Well, imagine that this is happening in a child during a critical period of growth and development. So this is, yeah. this is clearly an important issue for children. How many children is this affecting about? You know, it's est estimates vary, but about 2% of, of U.S. children are estimated to have sleep apnea. Okay, that's 2% too many, right? That's exactly yeah, right. right. Well, are the symptoms similar in children than they are in adults? Not necessarily. Some are the same, uh, such as snoring, mm -hmm. uh, date morning headaches, um, and um, 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 crankiness or, or irritability. Okay. But some are very different. And in children, we often see mood disorders. Um, we see increased aggressiveness, decreased uh, ability to pay attention, and in fact there's an association between sleep apnea and what's sometimes diagnosed as attention deficit disorder. We also see bedwetting in children as a manifestation of sleep apnea. Isn't that interesting? And you, you were talking to me earlier and you said that this is studies that have been shown over maybe the course of a hundred years. We've seen that there's something there uh, that they weren't too sure about, but it kind of went away. Exactly. And then this information resurfaced in the 1970s. Exactly. As early as 1889 there was a study which linked sleep apnea and behavioral problems, what they called backwardness. Mm -hmm. um, and there was an awareness, at, at least back then, over 100 years ago. And then um, that scientific inquiry sort of went away and it resurfaced in the 1970s. And interestingly, over the past five years, more papers have been written in the past five years than in all of history before that. So clearly this has become something that we're more aware of and more concerned with and, and doing something about now. Is it treated the same way? As adults, no, it's not. Um, we've talked about treatment options for adults. The mainstay of therapy for children is removing tonsils and adenoids because that's the tissue that blocks the airway in children. And so, um, by and large, the therapy for sleep apnea in kids is to remove the tonsils and adenoids. Isn't that interesting? So. Yeah. Obviously, behavioral problems could be from something completely different rather than sleep apnea. How do you differentiate if a parent thinks they may have these symptoms? What do they do? What are it, they looking for? It's often difficult, but, but the American Academy of Pediatrics has issued a statement that says any regular snoring in children is abnormal and should be discussed with a pediatrician. Okay. And clearly, if the parents have any concern about behavior or growth and development in their children, one of the things that they should do is observe their child at sleep. And if there are any concerns about snoring or sleep quality, discuss it with a pediatrician. And how dangerous is this if it goes untreated? Oh, clearly it's very dangerous, just as, just as in adults and with the added concerns of behavioral growth and development difficulty. Okay, and let's talk about that. There is a growing number of children being treated with ADHD. Absolutely. Is this, do you think, a direct link you to know, sleep apnea? Sleep apnea does not, does not account for all of those cases, but clearly some of them are implicated uh, and, and related to sleep apnea. In fact, there was an interesting study that was done in Michigan, which looked at children in the, in the late 1990s mm -hmm. and evaluated them for the presence of regular snoring. Those children were then evaluated again four years later. And the children who had a history of snoring had a four times increased risk of attention and behavioral disorders compared to children who didn't snore regularly. Oh, well, it's, that's, that's frightening. All right, t let's run down these symptoms again. Number sure, one, absolutely. okay, snoring, irritability, and morning headaches. Absolutely, and those are similar to adults. Okay, two, we have um, hyperactivity and frequent bedwetting. Yes. How is that linked? You know, it's, it's not clear, but um, it's somehow presumably related to the decreased oxygen to the brain during sleep. Okay. And number three, we have um, sleeping longer, difficulty gaining weight. Yeah, it's interesting. Those are seemingly contradictory, but many children with sleep apnea, particularly really obese or overweight children, mm -hmm. sleep longer than children who don't have sleep apnea. On the other hand, many children with sleep apnea have a hard time, have what failure to thrive, have a hard time growing and gaining weight. And that's thought to be re related to regulation of growth hormone at night. Okay, so they wouldn't need to go through this whole sleep study like an adult would the, as far as to not necessarily it. not necessarily and clearly the first step is to discuss this with a pediatrician okay and um, so there's nothing drastic like surgeries or um, 
certainly not that CPAP math that you yeah, brought the, in last time. Mm, this is mostly maybe related to weight uh, when they're it's, young? It's related to weight and it's related to enlarged tonsils and adenoids. Okay. And so by and large for children, the treatment of sleep apnea is a trip to the ENT doctor and removal of tonsils and adenoids. Okay, excellent. Well, Dr. Craig Schwimmer, thank you so much for this information. Very important. Thank you. As always, good information. And for more info on the Sleep Apnea or Snoring Center, log on to snoringcenter.com or call 214-369-2345. Brenda?